Hello, what's up? What's happening? Welcome to the off season. The Great Barracudas did not make it to a bowl game. We finished six and six in year number one. Not a bad season. In the MAC Championship game, you have Miami of Ohio beat Toledo by one point, thirty-nine to thirty-eight. Alabama. Florida in the SEC championship game, and Florida wins by two, 23 to 21. Missouri, they would beat Texas. Missouri's unranked. Texas was number one, I believe, at the time, and they lose 31 to 27. Florida State's now number one. They beat Virginia Tech in the ACC championship game, 27 to 24. And then in the Conference USA championship game, you have Memphis beating up on UTEP 45 to 12. Matt Lionheart is your back to back. Heisman Trophy winner. Yes, we have to go way, way back. Way, way, way back. This game is getting old. This game about to be 20 years old in a second. But yes, Matt Liner, technically he would win his second straight Heisman. Jimmy Jones, decent season. 1,600 yards passing, 11 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Bell and Green both had playing time. Bell had more, and he also had a decent season when he got a chance to play. Mike McFadden, 1,500 yards. That's going to be amongst the tops. Like, top 20, top 10, top 5, we're going to wait and see. But he was also a man amongst boys when it came to the touchdown department. And Owens had six rushing touchdowns as well. Our senior receiver, Brian Banks, 615 yards receiving, seven touchdowns on 39 receptions. Falk, he had four touchdowns. 590 yards on 29 receptions. So we were definitely a run-first offense. That could change, but I think we're going to try to stick with a run-oriented offense, open things up a little bit more, though, as we go by the seasons. Charlie Woods, 47 tackles, 10 for loss to match his jersey number. He also had six sacks. Wilson was six tackles for loss. He also had two sacks. Johnson was the second leader in sacks with four of those things. Jacob Porter, five interceptions. Woods with three, Moore with two, Nelson with two, and Davidson, a linebacker that got, you know, some playing time from here and there, also had an interception. Jesse Campbell had the highest quarterback rating from Hawaii. Eric Morton. 400, 4,543 yards passing, 39 TDs. And I'm shocked that they let our top recruit get away from them. Freeman is from Hawaii, and he's going to come to D.C. to play some football when Hawaii needed a quarterback, clearly. So Darby, 1,900 yards rushing, 12 TDs, absolutely crazy. Adrian Peterson had about, what, 31 more yards than McFadden to beat him out for fourth place on the rushing list. But McFadden had 15 touchdowns. Adrian Peterson, 18. Glover was 17. Lewis was 16. And then Davis also had 15 rushing touchdowns. Rawls, 14 touchdowns, 1,883 yards receiving on 136 passes Receive that is absolutely ridiculous. Harris, he is your best receiver from Cal. He had a bunch of touchdowns, we've 19 of those things. House 96 tackles to lead all the college football. He's gonna miss their ball game, sucks, but it does happen in a sport like football. Craig, he has a grand total of 32 tackles for loss, 14 sacks. Both are top in college football. Dorsey with six interceptions. That's on top. Jacob Porter tied for let's call it third with two guys being tied. For first, the New Orleans Bowl, Miami beats up on North Texas. Miami had no business being in that bowl, but when you had the season that they did at 6-6, six and six, you're going to be there. Virginia Tech, 28-10 to 10 over Texas Tech. They win the, the, the Champ Sports Bowl. The JMAC Bowl, Toledo, they lose to UTEP. And then Central Michigan, they lose to TCU. Temple, they lose to Northern Illinois. Bowling Green and the Las Vegas Bowl, they would be up on Wyoming. Fresno State, they would be Tulsa. No, they would lose a toast in the Hawaii Bowl and MPC Computers Bowl. Louisiana Tech would beat Boston College. Idaho would beat Idaho would lose to Miami of Ohio. Big time. That wasn't even close. Colorado lost to Rutgers. Insight Bowl, Syracuse, they would lose to Virginia. The MasterCard, Alamo Bowl, Nebraska, they would lose to Iowa. Uh, NC State, they would lose to Pittsburgh, LSU. They would beat up on Kansas State in the Houston Bowl. And then in the Emerald Bowl out here in California, BYU, they would put hands on Boise State. Probably two colleges don't get enough love. UCLA in the Holiday Bowl, they would fall to Oklahoma. And I'm pretty sure Adrian Peterson got off in that game. A game between Maurice Jones Jr. and Adrian Peterson. Probably a good one. San Diego State, they are going to beat up on New Mexico State in the Music City Bowl. 
Buffalo, 38 to 30. Stanford and Michigan, 38 to 16. Michigan wins the Sun Bowl. AutoZone Liberty Bowl, you got New Mexico taking on Memphis. Memphis wins that game. Utah would lose by three to Clemson and Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Outback Bowl, Penn State blankets South Carolina. The SBC Cotton Bowl, you got Texas. They lose to Georgia. Texas loses back-to-back -back games after not losing a single game in the regular season. But in the Big 12 championship game and in the bowl game, they came up just a little bit short. Florida, they would be up on Missouri in the Fiesta Bowl. Purdue, they would lose to Arizona State. Tennessee, they're going to be up on USC, 30-22 to in the Orange Bowl. And then the Rose Bowl hosts the national championship game in Louisville. Has the perfect season. Beats Florida State 23-20. to They are your national champions. Brandon Seiler from Florida. Just a sophomore wins the Benaric Award. Matt Leinard, he is going to win the Best Quarterback Award. The Walker Award, of course, that goes to the Best Running Back, goes to Dallas Lewis out of West Virginia. Beats Oklahoma's Adrian Peterson. Lawrence Harris from Cal is your best receiver. Another Lawrence from the Pac-10, Michael Lawrence. He's going to win your best tight end out of Arizona State. So the Pac-10 represented fairly well, if you ask me, okay? Coming out of Northern Illinois, you're going to have your best offense of linemen. And then out of Ohio State, you're going to have your best center or your top center winning the Remington Award, and that's Chris Cole. Dallas Green going to win the Lombardi Award. Coming out of BYU, show the Cougs some love. Justin Jackson, he is the best linebacker in the nation and then coming out of Texas, you got Kyle Williams or, or Griffin, whatever his name is, Kyle Williams. He wins the Thorpe Award, just like that. Texas has another Thorpe Award winner. Matt Allen, your best kicker. And then out of Texas, you're going to get your best punter. And then coach of the year, no, kicker turn of the year is Kyle Brown, excuse me, jumping the gun out of TCU, Red Shirt Jr. And then the best coach has to be the Louisville coach. Is that Petrino? I don't know. It might be. Let's move on. So when it comes to our budget, we're going to change things up. We're going to take away discipline. So it's very important that we get guys that at the very least have A or B plus overall field awareness. Because I do not scout players because the budget is so tight that I want to make sure that we have enough recruiting points to actually recruit these guys and not waste recruiting points on scouting. You know scouting is important. But I do feel like if they do have somewhere around a A overall rating for their field awareness, it translates to off the field with them being pretty bright off of the field. They're not going to do too many things off of the field to bring a black guy to your program. So these are the guys that are leaving. Jimmy Jones, one of the best guys on there. He was our quarterback. He is gone. He was only 70 overall. And I have a feeling that Freeman, um, our quarterback that we signed, uh, I think he's going to be better than him. I'm just saying. He's a four-star recruit, I believe, maybe even a five-star. I can't remember, but I know that he is an elite 11 quarterback, and those guys are usually pretty good. Woods, Allen, and Smith, all three of them were outside linebackers. They all got significant playing time. Uh, Smith and Woods were probably the two best out of the bunch, and man, oh man, those guys will probably be missed. So we're going to have to hit, hit the recruiting trail hard to get some of these outside backers. So Freeman, he is a four-star recruit. We also got Whitlock outside linebacker, so we got one of the guys there. And then we also got Sullivan at receiver. We need tight end outside linebacker, middle linebacker, and cornerback. That's what we're going to target. And Madison is a five-star blue chip Juco transfer. So junior college guy. We're going to talk about playing time with him because he's up in age. I know he's looking to play some football on Saturdays, major FBS style. Nate Gibbs, he has us high on his list. He is also a junior college guy, and we are on top, and we're going to send our assistant coach to talk to him. I did not go out there. Everybody that I could use, you get about 25 scholarship minus the three that we had, so 22 scholarships to offer, and we offered about half of that. And the reason is I'm looking for guys that, again, if you see right there in the screen, A plus to B plus when it comes to field awareness because those guys typically have the best discipline and I'm not trying to have any headaches with this program. Do not want the NCAA come sniff sniffing around. This program is outstanding. We do not do no foolery. We try our very best to do what we got to do. So we're going to have the head coach call this guy. And then I was like, you know what? We're going to send the assistant coach. we got some extra flyer miles. You know what I'm saying? Freaking flyer miles on the credit card. So let's send our assistant coach to go talk to him. And that's basically it. We're going to send the assistant coach to basically talk to everybody except for some of these other guys like my man Lee out of Ohio. We're going to send our head coach to talk to him. Alfred Gold, 6'2", 210 pounds. I'm hoping that he can be a 
a tight end because there are no tight ends that wanted to sign with us. There was only one receiver that did, and we signed them during the in-season process. So no receivers in the off-season process had a real high interest in coming to North D.C., which I get because we do run the ball so much. But we also had the majority of our receivers coming back. So Lee Spencer, another Lee, wants to play linebacker for us. He's from Maryland, so North D.C. is right around the corner. But we're going to talk about program prestige, and we're going to send a head coach to go talk to him. Anybody that I felt like is going to be a dogfight to try to get, we sent the head coach to get. And we only could send him so many times because, again, we did not have that many points. We had a lot more points than we did with Grandland State, but we still didn't have a crazy number of points. Jeremy Butler from South Carolina, one of the guys I'm worried about, whenever that bar, the bars aren't like very, very high, they could just decide not to play college football, which is their choice. They don't have to play if they don't want to play. But at the end of the day, I'm spending my time trying to convince you to play football for my program because you say you're a football player that wants to play college football. So if you make me come all the way out to see you and then you just smack me away, I'm going to feel some type of way about that. So those are the guys that we're going to be going after. And our first recruit coming from D.C. Big D Tackle and Pearson. So I think he's going to work out for us pretty well. Week two of recruits. Battle, he's going to sign. Gibbs is going to sign in Lyle. So we got two middle linebackers from Alabama and New Jersey, respectfully. And then, of course, Battle, he comes from Ohio. And last time I checked, they produced solid cornerbacks, one of them being, of course, Charles Woodson, who's from Ohio, but went to the University of Michigan, obviously. So week three of recruiting. You can see we made some good pro progress. Excuse me. Uh, Rodriguez. Says he runs a 4-2. Again, it's not 100% accurate, the attributes, unless you take the time to actually uh, scout these guys. And you would do that by hitting the select button right there. It says select uh, scout points or scout prospect six points. You could do that if you had the points available. I choose not to do that. Sometimes in the past, past dynasties, I have, if I was really curious. But usually in those dynasties, you had a gang of points. And in those dynasties, I did not have coach firing on. And I think that led to the success of those teams so quickly. This, with coach firing on, I don't think you get the same amount of points. I'm trying to still figure it out, which is crazy because this game is almost 20 years old. But, you know, it's still one of the best football games around, if you ask me. So, again, Butler, I'm going to send the head coach to talk to him because, again, I would like to have another receiver. You know, he seems to be decent enough. Uh, location, this guy's from D.C., so let's talk about location with Terry Townsend. But... I would really like that receiver from South Carolina, but we'll see what happens. In week three, we do get Calvin Rodriguez, blue chip free safety. He might come in and start right away. Probably will not get redshirted, but he will probably get some playing time, whether he is the starter or not, because on defense, I do love to use my uh, subs to have different type of personnel and different type of formations out there. So Madison, he's still available. Again, he's a junior coming in. So, again, I want him to hit the field right away. Hopefully, he can be one of our top two corners, which I think he will be. But you never know because, you know, sometimes they're highly recruited, but they're not going to turn out to be, you know, that good. You really, really never know. We're going to send our head coach to talk to Gold. Again, I'm hoping that one of these athletes can be uh, tied in. You know what I mean? If strong safety is what it is, then hey, it is what it is. But we could really use a tight end. If not, you might see us go three wide with two backs. So I guess that would be 20 personnel. Two backs, zero tight ends, right? Uh, Terry Townsend, location again. Going to talk to him with the head coach. And hopefully that gets him to sign. Hopefully that convinces him that, hey, this is where he wants to be. And then I was looking at it. We probably don't need to send the head coach there. A phone call should suffice. And then we're going to send... Butler. We're going back to Butler because I want Butler. So Madison signs, Gold, the athlete signs, Hughes signs, Spencer signs, and then Townsend signs as well. So I must say, I do think recruiting is going fairly well. This is the first time I think in any of my dynasties that we have been picky because there are guys that are still out there that I could still get this late stage in recruiting. But again, I'm going by the field awareness. One, it means that they're going to be good players on the field kind of right off the bat because they're going to have high awareness ratings. But again, also I want to protect our reputation off of the field. So Crawford and then Pierre. I did not recruit these guys at all. The only guy left is this guy Butler. And again, we are tops when it comes to North Carolina and Georgia Tech. But 
He just ain't messing with us. I'm going to send the house to him. And then these other guys who I did not, you know, I did not want on the roster. We're going to talk about coaching style with him again. Um, I'm going to just get rid of them. And I could possibly get these guys. Probably not. I'm at the bottom of Pierre's list, so probably not there. But I'm going to just withdraw because I do not want him to sign. And then Crawford, he, we, we could get him. We're on top of his list. But I'm like, no, nah, I don't want that. And then they added three guys anyway. And then I realized that I had left uh, assistant assistant of recruiting help on like a recruiting assistance on and i never used that i've used that in the past but ever since i think jackson state maybe i turned it off because i didn't realize it was on until like i realized it was on so yeah max was a tight end we need a tight end so hey why not but there was literally no tight ends that wanted to come to our school Derek hood c plus field awareness he better not give us no trouble off of the field and then andy brewster a 4-1 and his speed's 97 so yes I like that a lot. So when it comes to some of the guys that uh, we could still go after, uh, yeah, that that's them right there. And I'm like, no, we're not going after none of those guys. So these are guys that we did go after. Rodriguez signed, five-star recruit. Madison star, signed, five-star recruit. So two five-star recruits. Craig Freeman, who we got during the in-season process, and Whitlock, two four-star recruits that are probably going to get playing time off the bat, especially Freeman, our our our, uh, our quarterback. Whether he's going to be a championship quarterback in year one or two, I don't know. But by three and four, he should be one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. I may still recruit a quarterback just to be a backup, just to be somebody that can step in right after him, kind of like a John David Booty, Matt Castle at a USC. That might not be the best guys on the roster, but we're going to keep them around because maybe when they're a senior they can step in and start and i know matt castle never did start but john david booty he did anyways man these are some of the guys that we missed out on and again it is what it is it's not the biggest deal in the wor world and then Derek hood better not be up to no good do you understand what i am telling you and terry townsend he's one of the gonna be the one of the lower recruits but we need a middle linebacker depth and then we got that in this year's recruiting class butler again he did not sign with anybody and that's his choice you do not have to play college football if you do if you don't want to but if you want to then you better step up and be a grown man about yours you hear me texas and oklahoma have the number one and number two recruiting classes respectfully Texas with five five-star recruits. Absolutely filthy. Joseph Neal, Newberry, and Williams are their three top recruits. Caleb Williams also from, they're all from Texas. It must just be nice to have Texas as, as, as the state that you play football in. Oklahoma, they get one of the Texas guys to sign with them. Iowa has the number three recruiting class. 14 four-star recruits. Absolutely filthy year for them. California got some studs. One guy's from Oakland. Oakland, stand up, baby. My hometown coming through with the Arizona State recruit. And then Stanford had a top five class as well. Stanford, that's pretty impressive because they do not, you know, slip on their academic requirements for anybody. It doesn't matter who you is. You better have the grades if you're going to be at Stanford. Ohio State's number six. Texas A&M is number seven. Texas Tech had one five-star recruit, seven four-stars, 11 three-stars, and they're your eighth best class. Florida State, they are your ninth best class with one five-star and eight four-star recruits. The best guy coming out of the state of Georgia, Robert Scott DN. He is going to be staying in uh, Mississippi, playing with the Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Mississippi State had the top 10 class. And the Northeast C, top 13, not bad at all. Two five-stars, seven fours, three fives, Oh, five threes, excuse me, and three twos. So a grand total of 17 scholarships handed out. The best player in the nation is going to Alabama. Caleb Williams, who we saw, he's the second best player. Then Stephen Williams, he is going to Oklahoma. Marcus Love, he is, he is. they say he's ranked number eight as far as positional rank. But, I mean, hey, it is what it is. These are some of the top recruits. This is the nation's top 100. So I don't know if the order's messed up or whatever, but, hey, it is what it is. These are where these guys are going. So Collier, he is going to Mississippi State. Anderson, he's going to Maryland. He's from Maryland. I wish he would have, you know, wanted to come to our school, but it wasn't happening. Dwayne Jenkins, he's going to the Ohio State University. They're known for developing safety, so he's probably going to turn out to be a beast at at Columbus with Ohio State. Neil, cornerback from Texas, going to Texas. So Texas cornerbacks are going to be good. They're typically at least, you know, 2000s through 2010, they had some great, great corners. Uh, they could bring it back, you know what I'm saying? But the cornerback room looks to be pretty solid. And then Stanford had a top center recruit. 
And they had one of the top three safeties recruit. And Gold is a strong safety. I tried to make him a tight end. He was in the 50s. Wasn't going to happen. He is a strong safety at 74 overall. Arnold had one of the best breakouts. He's now 78 overall. Fox is off 78 overall. Johnson, who missed some time due to injury, he's now 88 overall. So that looks good. Seth Burks, 82 overall, which I love. But we got so many young linebackers, and I love young linebackers because they're typically faster than the guys that you have, especially when you first start with a creative school. Typically, the guys you have are not going to be that fast. The linebackers that we brought in are very, very fast, and they're going to be competing for starting jobs. When it comes to our quarterback room, Bell and Green both upgraded three, with Bell being the higher overall at 68 overall. Green is faster, though, with 76 overall speed. And Mike McFadden, plus two for him. Owens, plus two for him as well plus two for birch and 88 overall rating for mcfadden you see it there so freeman he is going to be our starting quarterback and he could be the guy that is the catalyst for having some bigger name receivers come to our town because at that i believe he's 76 overall already like that's that's fabulous and he's a pocket passer he's not going to be scrambling too much so we've got to protect them you know what I'm saying? Roll out when necessary and let that thing fly. Let that beam fly. 97 overall speed for Brewster. And yeah, I'm liking that. Six foot one with all, the, all, all kinds of speed. I'm loving that. Samuel, I need more out of him. Not the fastest guy. Maxwell is faster. 6'6", 229 for Joey Maxwell. Uh, but I'm going to stick with Samuel. Did not get a lot from Samuel last year. Uh, but, hey, I, I'm looking for my Titans to step up. If not, we're just going to spread the field out with three receivers. Again, go 20 personnel. I'm not afraid. We have a good fullback. I use my fullback. Um, and, yeah, that's what we'll do. And a lot of single back sets as well. That That's going to be the game plan going in. So our right tackle is the best offensive lineman on the squad, Brent Thompson, red shirt junior at 85 overall. There goes Wendell Johnson, 88 overall. Wilson, 76 overall. Brown is also 76 overall. They're kind of the same player. Bobby Brown is a little bit stronger and older. And that might play a factor because, again, I am not afraid to substitute my D-line, my linebackers, add a safety to, like, the dime or whatever. Um, I'm not afraid to do so because, again, stopping the run is the main priority for me in this game because whenever I don't stop the run, we usually lose. And I'm not trying to be losing no games like that. Not in year number two. We want to be in a bowl game. So then when it comes to inside backer. I want to start. I want to start some of these young guys, and it always comes back to bite me because composure is so important in this game. And upperclassmen have the composure, but I do plan on using my middle linebackers a lot, especially when we go nickel. I'll probably have two line, two middle linebackers as my two backers, and then at the DN spot, I may have a linebacker or two there, depending on the package and depending on what the offense is throwing at us. So that's a possibility, um, but. Again, linebackers are at a premium on this squad. Are they the best? No. Are we like Penn State in their heyday? No, not necessarily. However, we do have a bunch of linebackers that I that I can't wait to see on the field, and there's going to be a bunch of competition for people trying to get tackles. You feel me? So Madison, he is our second best cornerback, and then Battle, he is our fourth, and he will stick right there. He will not be registered. He will get some playing time. So both of our recruits, Madison and, of course, Battle, are going to be seeing us. Uh, Plenty of playing time for their first season in the FBS. Of course, Madison is a junior after playing two seasons of junior college football. Porter, he's back at 88 overall. Gold is 76. I could look to register him. It's probably not going to happen. I want him to get some playing time. So our first game of the season going to be at New Mexico, then at Hawaii. So a homecoming for Craig Freeman. And then we got TCU and Texas A&M at home. Back on the road to face Baylor. Then Purdue, a bye week. Rice, another bye week. And then we're at Syracuse, at Air Force. And then we have an open week. And then we have Georgia Tech, who's ranked number nine as right now. We're at Auburn. And then we finish the year versus Notre Dame. So a decent schedule, nothing too crazy. Hood, he will get red-shirted. Again, don't give me no problems off of the field, big homie. Don't do it. None of my receivers are going to get red-shirted. Uh, Smith, I was thinking about Smith, but I, yeah, I'm not going to do it. I could do it, but I'm not going to do it. No O lineman can get registered. No D lineman, except for our one of our top recruits in uh, in uh, Gary. Uh, but yeah, he's still at the bottom. He's in the 70s, which I like to see. As long as my freshmen are in the 70s, that's a good sign. But he, he will get registered. And then Davidson is a senior. I'm not going to register him. Uh, Spencer, I could. Lee Hughes, I could. Whitlock, I could. But. 
It's like these guys can run 82 speed, 80 speed, 84 speed. It's like who do I want to sit for a season? And it's like it's none of them. And then middle linebacker, we had the same issue. Now, I went back and I changed it up, and this is what it looks like after I changed it up. It's going to be Carlson and Townsend going to be sitting. Gibbs, he's the strongest out of all of our linebackers tied with Richard for 72 overall. And then, yeah, Lyles I want to have out there because of his speed. So, again, maybe I made a mistake, maybe not. I think it's going to work out okay. Rodriguez, I could redshirt, but I'm not going to. And then Gold, like I already said, I could, but I'm not going to. He is the fastest out of our strong safeties. Pretty even, though, 84 speed, 82 speed. Speed respectfully for my strong safeties. Weber, Matthews, McKinney, Brown. These are our top four recruits. We have a fullback and have the best fullback in the room. He hopefully will stay in state, kind of. I know Maryland and D.C. are kind of separate because D.C. is a district, but you know what I mean. It's Maryland. He's a fullback. He's seen us play. We use our fullback. He should want to sign on the dotted line. Got a couple of running backs out there as well. And again, if you notice, B to A plus when it came to field awareness. We're not playing around with this dynasty. Reed is your top for Heisman. Then you got Young, Peterson, Johnson, and then Parker out of OU. Tennessee is your number one team in the nation, followed by Florida, USC, Oklahoma is number four, Florida State's number five, Iowa is number six, followed by the University of Georgia. The University of Louisville is after them after winning national champion, a uh, national championship. Georgia Tech is number nine, Michigan at ten, then Texas, Virginia Tech, LSU, Alabama's fourteen, Nebraska up in the fifteen, and then sixteen is NC State, followed by Arizona State. Virginia, Penn State, Michigan State runs at the top 20, Texas Tech at number 21, Miami 22, South Carolina 23, Kansas State, and then Ohio State. Ohio State going to make some noise. They're ranked number 25. They got A plus overall, A overall, A minus offense. Like, like they're going to be a problem. They had A's all across the board, whether it was A, a, a or A minus. So, hey. Ohio State going to be messing with some people. Please believe it. We're probably going to play them next year because they are, they are a rival. Anyways, that is going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope that the rest of the day is the best of your day. And until me to get my friends, peace, love, hot sauce.